We do a, vol a multitude of other workshops. Uh, we do a mission workshop. Uh, I do landscape workshops. We also travel and do workshops. Um, so you keep, keep on having to mix it up, you know. Uh, yes, you do have groupies that will follow you, you know, and c come to a, a lot of your workshops. But And for me, too, I want to do, you know, not that I'm, I'm a mission-type guy. You know, I don't do that normally, but it, it gets me out of my comfort zone. Uh, you know, I'm really good with a figure, and it's a natural thing for me to do. Uh, so it's fun to sort of press that envelope and go with the students to a mission. You know, we get great access. We have archaeologists on site, and they, we get to go to places in the mission that no one else can go. Uh, it's a unique experience, uh, and the California missions are such a huge part of, of the history of California. One of my favorites is uh, the tutorials, and that's a one-on-one -on -one experience. Um, I, lo I love the group, group uh, workshops, it's a different dynamics, but uh, the one-on-one -on -one gives me an opportunity to spend uh, one day or two day with the student uh, working on whatever they want. I mean, uh, whatever I have to offer, if it's with a nude or if it's platinum printing or you know, if it's landscape, it, I'm very flexible, I can, I can move around and do pretty much anything. Point Lobos to me is a family graveyard. <laughs> I mean, they're all buried there. I mean, they're not buried, but they're scattered. Their ashes are scattered there. I photographed there a lot when I was young. You know, it's just what you did. Um, I, go, I still will go there and photograph, you know, just there again, getting out of my comfort zone, getting out of the figure. Uh, I take workshops there, show them places that Edward photographed. It's a very, I just, it's a very familiar place. It's like an old book. You know, when we went down the other day with you guys and we, we uh, went to Weston Beach, you know how many times I've been there? It's so wonderful and it's all the rocks, you know, and I still couldn't help not get Gina's iPhone camera and take a picture because it is a stunning place. And you see why, why my family always returned there, even Brett. And Brett, you know, he would always say, you know, I've, I've been here a hundred thousand times, you know, but I always bring my camera. And it is, it's a unique place. Uh, and it's, it's stamped, you know, with, with the history of my grandfather and, and my family. Today, uh, what we know as Weston Beach, when I was young, was called Pebbly Beach. Uh, and because it was such a significant place that, that my grandfather photographed, that Ansel Adams and my dad got together with the Park Service, and they actually changed the name to Weston Beach, and that's what it's called today. The camaraderie of artists, I think, has always been here. And, and it's funny, you look at Carmel now, and it's definitely changed. It's changed since I was a kid, you know. It's, you used to have gas stations on the four corners. And you sort of may think that this has gone away, that this, this artist community has sort of succumbed to the commercialization of Carmel. And it really haven't. There's an incredible... Uh, groups of, of photographers and painters and poets and that still exist and still come over to this house. I mean, um, it's amazing. You just have to peel back the layers a little bit and, and nothing has really changed. But friendships, you know, like uh, my friendship with, with John, you know, I've known him for, forever and, you know, uh, Hunter Witherall and, and all these other photographer friends that I have. It's very unique, and it goes back, I think, to what we were talking about earlier about what drew Edward here. I think a lot was that. Other people doing the similar type of creative work, the similar type of, of, of excitement in the work that, that we're do, all doing together. The importance of the print, or the final product uh, in photography, is, is, is kind of unique in, in any other kind of, of uh, discipline that you do. Um, because of the surface is so one-dimensional, it has to be of paramount importance. It has to bring life to the image. Um, paper is so important in that process. And to find a paper that speaks to you, I look at it as, as a language. If you put, let's say, photography, the art of photography is as heart and soul. The heart would be the preparation and, and, and the ideas and how you come up with it. The soul is going to be the tools. It's going to be the surface of the paper. It's going to be your developer. It's going to be your negative. Those are the souls of the language that you're trying to say or trying to speak. I see art as a language. And we all speak that language differently. So my tools, to, in order for you to understand how I'm speaking or what my language is, is a consistency and a clarity in the tools. 
The Friend of the Month Club actually was not a unique idea to Gina and I. It, my grandfather came up with it. And he sort of based it on uh, the, the Book of the Month Club, because I think that had just come out. And he thought this is a great way of marketing his work. You did a print of the month. You'd pay, I think it was $15. You would get a print every month of his choice in the mail. Uh, uh, you know, you get a year's worth of work. You get 12 prints. Um, and I thought, well, that's a great idea. You know, of course, his problem was reaching people. You know, you wrote postcards back then, mail them out. Well, now we have the internet and we reach thousands of people. So we can really cover a lot more people than he could. I think he did it for five years with not, uh, not much success. I mean, it's too bad he could have come here and bought a pepper for 15. You know, it's a million dollar piece of art right now. Um, so that appealed to me. Also, uh, we were down in Photo LA, and I noticed that all this photography was selling for very high price. And young people had a hard time getting into that market, you know, starting to collect photography, fine art photography. So when we first started out, I think we were selling the prints for 150 bucks, but you had to buy all 12. And then at the end of the year, I would send a portfolio with a cover sheet. What defines uh, one of my images is I don't want it be, to be safe. I don't, for the viewer, I want to challenge each viewer, and each viewer is gonna see it differently. That's very important to me. You know, I don't care if they get it my way, I want them to get it their way. I'm always asked to, to, to describe two or three of my favorite images, and I always come up with the same answer. It's the next one I take. Because it, to me, it's a living process. Um, the work that I've done before, it's, it's like old memories. You know, I want new memories. I want new things that excite me. So the ones that excite me the most are the ones I haven't done yet. And yes, I have favorites, you know, the one of Gina and the cactus, you know, the more iconic one, Gina in the, in the window. Uh, and there are a few other images that, you know, they're just, that sort of are pets. But uh, seriously, it would be the next image I take. My, my creativity and why, my, why I keep creating is the excitement of the adventure, the adventure that I'm living. So not when, I'm not just a photographer when I pick up the camera. I'm a photographer at all times. You know, it's how I live my life. That's what I try and teach in, in my workshops. It's a lifestyle. It's how you see other people. It's how you relate to other people. It's who you are as a human. Recently, my son Zach, came to me and asked to borrow a camera. And I said, sure, you know, I'd love for you to, to do photography. And so he's been working in the dark room. I've been showing him, teaching him, you know. Um, he sold his first photograph the other day. My good friend Roman Lawrence came, comes down. And I mean, talk about spoiling an artist. I mean, it's a hundred bucks he paid for his first photograph. I mean, I didn't sell a print for 20 years, you know? I mean, go figure that. I was just like, but yeah, I love it. I love that he's doing it. And that fourth generation is definitely on the way.